Welcome back to 21 Convention 2019 of Orlando, Florida. Our next speaker is from themanmindset.com. He is an alumni speaker of the 21 Convention from both the Patriarch Edition earlier this year, as well as in Warsaw, Poland in the summer. He is known as, well actually more importantly than what he's known as, he's here to punch you guys in the chest and help you protect your fucking name. Without further ado, please help me welcome to the stage, Steve the Dean Williams! Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Welcome back. Thank you, brother. All right. What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? Almost done. Let's get it going. Um, one of the things y'all, uh, most of y'all guys were asking is, why is it I read books and I do all these things, but yet I just can't move forward? Let me ask y'all a question. How many of y'all, if y'all had the opportunity right now, just show of hands, if you had the opportunity to have money right now, if I pulled money out of my pocket like this, and I said, who wants money? How many, and if you really want money, show me a show of hands, who will want it? All right, show of hands, right? All right. All right, y'all want money, right? Well, let me show y'all something. See that right there? The pennies, the dimes, the nickels. The end result of me being a man, the end result of me being a whore, the end result of me being a gigolo and a fucking asshole started with this with my mentor. Because my mentor, I started in 1980, I was nine years old. That's the first thing my mentor did. He asked me who wanted money. And because I said I wanted money, because my thoughts were in line with my behaviors. Did I hit the wrong thing? Let me see, hold on. Uh, and, oh, I guess I go backwards, right? Let me see. Oh, there we go, I'm sorry, I got it now. Ask y'all your money. See, the thing about the money I want you to understand is this. For a lot of you guys, you didn't come up there and get the money. That was the opportunity. You rose your hand, you said you wanted money. But when the opportunity presented itself, you didn't take it. Because you don't realize that nickel, that penny, and that dime is a penny, dime, and a nickel more than you have in your bank account. But what happened was your pride and your ego stopped you from getting the money because in your mind, it wasn't enough. You were looking for the dollars, the fives, and the tens, and things like that. You see, gentlemen, pride and ego hold people back from things they want to do, and it keeps them from things that they should have. But there's another side for a few of you other guys. A lot of you guys are worried about what the other person might think of you if you came up here and grabbed a nickel, a dime, or a penny. Now, I'm a big kid. I got kids, grandfather. So, there was a movie called The Lion King, and there was something that was in the trailer that was really powerful that was said. Life's not fair. While some are born to feast, others spend their lives in the dark begging for scraps. You see, most guys would rather stay in the same spot than take a step forward because they want instant results. They want to be a doctor in a day, a lawyer in a day, they want to fly an airplane in a day. But the problem is most men are out of nature. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk nature versus flow. You see, when a man is out of nature, OK, and all you do is think about the things you want to do and you don't do them, they're only dreams, fantasies, and wasted fucking time. All you're doing is wasting your time dreaming about it when your behaviors are not in line with what you think. But see, when a man is out of nature, he tends to do things that men don't do. As Ed was talking about trying to cheat the game, they will, some of them, will try to cheat the game by roofing a woman's drink. When a man is out of nature, some of these guys out there will have male cuddle parties where they want to bond. Now, don't get it wrong, we're bonding as men, but I'm not cuddling with you motherfuckers. <laughs> when a man is out of nature, they dress a certain way. Now, if you know anything about prison, you're not supposed to dress that way. There, there's, there was, there's a rule and reason why they did that in prison, but it shows when you're out of nature. When a man is out of nature, he hangs out with the food, hanging out with women trying to be their fucking best friends, 
trying to be that shoulder to cry on thinking that if I just hang in there long enough, she's going to give me an opportunity. No, men, I don't, I don't hang out with the food. It's not my job. That's, I, I can't, I don't even, we're going to talk about that bullshit, but that's not, not happening. Also, when a man is out of nature, he walks on eggshells, meaning when there's a woman that you like or someone you're interested in, you tippy toe around because you're afraid of either she is not going to like you, she's going to judge you, or you just don't know what to say and get your point across. So what they do is walk on eggshells. Very important. Get your crayons out. When I say get your crayons out, write that down. Y'all mean? Nah, nah. When I say y'all fucking mean, y'all mean. Motherfucker, y'all mean one time, goddammit. All right. The way you think must be in line with your behavior. See, the problem is when you are out of flow, you are what I call a victim. You're always distributing types of behaviors that are not really necessarily manly. And what do I mean by that? When you're out of flow, you're always blaming everybody for everything that goes wrong in your goddamn life. You're always making excuses. You always lie to yourself and tell yourself you're something that you're not. You live in the past, and you're always prejudging things that will hold you back. Also, when you are out of nature, what happens is you will begin to follow somebody that is trying to prevent you from learning, where they will sit around and they will try to stop places like this and information that will get to you because they are out of nature. That was 284 individuals out of nature just because they were mad and angry. What a fucking shame. When there isn't a connection between your thoughts and actions, most men are lost. And when they're lost, they will obey, follow, confirm, fit in, and submit. Motherfucking man doesn't submit, gentlemen, at all. But what does it make you? It's like you're in the Serengeti as a lion and some hippopotamus comes up to you and says, why don't you try an impossible zebra burger that's made out of grass? It, it, it tastes like a real zebra, but it's not the real thing. You know, there was, I think this is like 1959. There was a cartoon that came out way before the internet, and it was all about Lambert the Sheepish Lion. And what it was about was a lion that I guess he got lost, and he was raised by sheep until a point he thought he was a sheep and not a lion. You see, when one is out of his nature, even a lion believes he's a sheep if he's told he's a sheep. But when it comes to a man and it comes to y'all out of order, y'all have what I call two plus two is five thinking, not four, but five thinking, and I'm gonna explain that to you. Two plus two is five thinking is, is that those that are begging for scraps think the world owes them something. That is two plus two, five thinking. When you feel life in the world owes you something, let me tell you something. Life, the game, they don't owe you a goddamn thing. They don't owe you anything. But a lot of people have this thought process that life owes them something. You believe the negative stories that someone tells you. Matter of fact, not only do you believe the negative stories, you will take somebody else's story and you will make it your own story because of your trust to somebody who is not really being a man himself. Two plus two is five thinking. Believe in someone because other people believe it, that herd mentality. Just because one person believes it or the herd believes it, for a lot of you, y'all want a sense to be somewhere or to, to be a part of the group, and sometimes you feel like, you know what, in order to be a part of the group, I have to go ahead and believe that. Two plus two, two plus two, five thinking that thinking your behaviors and past attitudes can never be changed. A lot of y'all feel that, look, these are the, these are the, uh, this is what I am. I'll never change. I'm too tall, too short, too fat, too skinny, too this, too that. I, I'm too poor. I don't have it. I can't get a woman. Poor, poor fucking me. Drawing conclusions based off the information that goes against manhood. See, one thing that Ed was talking about, about cheating the game, is that the game is a constant flow. And that is one thing you can never cheat, is the game. Adopting the opinions and behaviors of the majority to feel safer. Now, for a lot of guys, that means joining cults, 
or join in organizations that declaw you and defang you and take away from your manhood instead of help you to be a better man. Believing that you cannot control your outcomes. Every man out here as a responsible man, we can never blame a woman for doing anything that we don't allow her to do. We don't allow her to do. But also remember, a woman's gonna do whatever you allow her to do. And if you are a doormat, she's definitely gonna walk over you. Assuming that you know everyone uh, is thinking without any proof, trying to think or trying to automatically Harry Potter something. Like you see a woman, you automatically feel that, oh wait, she's not gonna like me. She's not gonna be interested in me. There's no way I've got a shot in her. Matter of fact, she doesn't want a guy like me. She wants a guy like this. She wants a tall guy, a guy with money, a guy with a nice car. That is pottering the game. Thinking and believing something won't happen because it, 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 because it hasn't happened before. Ignoring the truthful information so you don't have to think about the unpleasant facts. Truth of the matter is, man, when it comes to this game and it comes to you gentlemen learning, the problem is you're not honest with yourself. It, you have to be honest with yourself in order for you to grow. Judging outcomes and decisions and how they turned out rather than looking at the decision uh, when it was made. Drawing conclusions rather than accepting the facts. And the fact of the matter is, she doesn't have to like your asses at all. She has every right to say no, and she's got every right to reject you. She doesn't have to like you. Sticking with the bad decisions because you invested so much time and money. There's a lot of you guys out there that have followed guys and realized that they were wrong and gave you wrong information, but yet, because you invested in them, you stuck with them and stood by them. Now it's time to talk about understanding flow. Now, I'm a big Marvel guy, like, like how Ed would say this big ass kid, I, I'm a big ass kid when it comes to Marvel, so this is my dude right here. Thanos is my guy. I love Thanos, because Thanos is how you men should think, not only when it comes to life, when it comes to everything that you do. So there was a saying that he said in the last, the movie, and, and this was, I mean, push, like I'd say, push my wig back. And he said, as long as there are those that remember what was, there will always be those who are unable to accept what can be. And what did he mean by that? As long as there are those who remember what was, they will always have two plus two, five thinking. That means the man that lives in the past. He's, he's, he's in the present, but when he sees something he likes or something that he wants, he goes back to the past, but he never falls forward into the future. There will always be those who are unable to accept what can be. And what can be is that you all are great men. Two plus two is four. But I don't have to tell you that. You should know that. But one of the things Thanos said is one of the hardest choices uh, require the strongest will. And the thing that separates the men from everybody else is the willpower. Now, let me explain Thanos for a second here. Because in the movie, just the movie, not the comics or anything, but in the movie, everybody thought it was all about the snap, him snapping his fingers, but it wasn't. Basically what Thanos was, the Thanos, is that it didn't matter. See, he had to eliminate half of the human race, okay? That was the goal. But the thing was, is that he didn't care what was next. He always was moving toward what he had to do. And when he was doing it, his thoughts were always in line with his actions. Even when he lost, he kept going forward. Even when he was rejected, he kept going forward. Even when he got kicked down, he kept moving forward. Thanos' ultimate goal, like I said, was to get rid of half of life. But the thing was, he wasn't in the calculations. He was just into half. And that means that when it came to half, Thanos wanted to get rid of half, but he didn't think about the half. He didn't say, well, you get to stay and you get to leave and you, he didn't give a fuck. 
His ultimate goal was to get rid of half. He didn't care what half it was. His thoughts were in line with his behaviors. This is the most important part. Who the fuck are these guys? Do you think he even thought or cared about what they thought? Did he care just because they wanted to save the planet? Do you think Thanos is just going to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to do what you want to do. No. Because when your thoughts are in line with your behaviors, you necessarily block out everybody that has a thought. And it didn't matter. Even if they agreed with Thanos, he didn't care. Because he was laser focused on what he wanted. But this was the best part about Thanos that made him so fucking cold and why I love him. Because once he reached his goal, he could have kept the glove once he reached it. But what did he do? He destroyed it because he didn't need it anymore. Because he reached his goal, he achieved what he wanted, so he didn't need it anymore. He destroyed the stones and moved on. Because his thoughts were always in line with his actions. And that's the thing that is hurting the majority of you guys today. You want to be men, and I'm proud of you for wanting to be men. Or you want to learn what it takes to be a man. You want to learn what you need. But what are you going to do if you had the information? So many of you guys now, nowadays are trying to do one or two things. You are either trying to fit out of the box, meaning that you're trying to be a little bit different, thinking that being different is going to help me win, either with women or whatever it is you want. And some of you feel like you have to conform to fit in the box of what a woman wants you to be. Well, this is what I say to you guys. Fuck that. Why can't you be the box? Who says that you have to fit out? And who says that you have to fit in? See, society tells you guys all the time that you should play by their laws, rules, codes, and standards. And what I'm telling you is fuck what they think. I want to be the box, and I'm going to do what I want to do. The biggest problem y'all have is right here. This is y'all thinking, win, lose, or draw. I'm either going to win with a girl, or I'm either going to lose, or I'm going to draw. But let me tell you the truth about being a man. There is no such thing as losing. I don't fucking lose. I'm Steve the goddamn Dean Williams. When I, when I see a woman, I'm so motherfucking cold with women, I bet myself <laughs> of how fast I'm gonna pick her up. I don't lose. If she says no, do you think I lose? Do you say if she has a boyfriend, do you think I lose? No, I don't lose because I go after what I want because my thoughts are in line with my behaviors. So technically, instead of win, lose, or draw, I win, I learn, and I draw. And victory, you think I'm happy? Hell no. Because my question is, is why couldn't I do it faster? If I picked her up in 15 minutes, fuck, why couldn't I do it in 10? And even if she said no, which she has a right to say no, I can still learn from the experience and don't let the experience control me. Now, drawing with just her just saying, you know, I have a man or something, or maybe she said something that turned me off, and I threw her ass back in the water. See, guys, it's basically like this. How you think has to line up with how you behave. And either certain things happen, just like Thanos. Once you achieve the goal, you move on. Because that's just a part, a chapter in the story of the life of you as a man. And guess what? If you don't achieve it, if she says no, if she turns you down, she doesn't talk to you at all, who gives a fuck? You learn from the experience. You don't allow the experience to control you and your narrative. Hey, my boy Goldberg, always, like Goldberg said, when Goldberg in the 90s, he was kicking everybody's ass, that's all he would say, who's next? Who's next? He didn't care what was in front of him. He would always say, who's next? And that's the mindset that you guys need to begin to incorporate to solve the riddles that you have of how do I go about and breaking and how do I learn how to do this? As a man, what is important here? 
is that you have to begin to take a mental journey. Now, I know y'all guys, I'm not telling y'all get in a spaceship and fly the galaxy for, for pearls and all the other stuff. No. What I'm saying is, is that you guys have to take a mental journey to go ahead and found your stones of willpower that are going to push you to align your behaviors with what you think. Because if you cannot align your behaviors with what you think, it doesn't matter what book, what YouTube, or what person is on this stage, the problem is because that is a victim mentality, you are never gonna find and achieve the success that you wanna achieve. First thing that you need to do is discipline. You gotta have self-control. You gotta have self-control. What is self-control to me? When I meet a woman for the first time, I'm not even thinking about having sex with her. I know that sounds crazy. I, hey, look, I do want to smash. Don't get it wrong, but I'm not thinking about having sex with her. Why? Because I can have sex with a lot of other women. What's so special about her? What the fuck is she bringing to my table? You see what I'm saying, guys? See, most of you guys, she already knows the game. She knows you want sex. So she's going to play you based off of your desire and your hunger for sex. But when you have control over your thoughts and who you are, you don't make it about sex. Because what y'all don't understand is, while you're talking to her on the phone or texting her, you're really having sex with her on a mental level. Next thing, self-motivated. You have to drive. You have to uh, have a strong sense of purpose. What is your end game? What is a woman to you? What is a relationship to you? And if she can't qualify, she's not worthy of you. Focused. You must be able to eliminate all distractions. We're going to talk a little bit about that in the workshop, but I'm going to explain to you that all of you were able to do this at one time, but because you believe the stories that have gone on in your life, you worry about everything else around you except what is in front of you. Adaptable, you must adapt to every challenge and circumstance instead of making excuses. You've gotta be air, water, and sand. Meaning that women are not like us and we gotta stop thinking that. They are nothing like us. They are driven by their emotions. We are driven by that ass and not the emotions. And I know y'all don't care about the emotions, but what I call that, that's the second pussy between her ears. We've got to focus on that instead of making excuses for ourselves why we can't do certain things. Resilient. You have to be able to bounce back from rejection. But what did I tell you before? Is there really such thing as rejection? I mean, guys, if you think about it, you get rejected every day. What happens if you go to the grocery store or McDonald's? I know some of y'all eat healthy. Just follow me on this shit. What happens if you go to McDonald's and you want to shake? You, we all know the shake machine and the ice cream machine is always fucked up. But... When you ask for something that you want, are you thinking about the people beside you? Are you thinking about the people behind you? And if they don't have it, what do you automatically do? You automatically come up with a solution. See, guys, I can tell you right now, just, tell you, just say to yourself right now, I'm hungry. Just say that to yourself. And your mind is going to figure out possibilities. It's going to figure out distance. What do you want? Chinese food. It's going to do all these things. But what you got to understand is this. Life doesn't owe any of you anything. It doesn't. Women don't owe you shit. She doesn't have to like you. She doesn't have to want to be with you. She is allowed to say no. She's allowed to do that. But here's the thing. If you go and have a learn mentality instead of a loss mentality, then you don't give a fuck about the end result. I don't care because I can run into 50 million women like you. There's nothing special about you until I say there's something special about you. Competitive. Uh, you got to love the thrill of the challenge. Like I say, there is, not, there is nothing like seeing a woman and saying, to you, hey, Steve, how are we going to do this? Land, see your air. How are we going to attack this? How, do you want to make her smile first? Do you make her, make her want to make her laugh? Do you want to make her blush? Do you want to make her think? What do you want to do first? Because I'm in control of me. I am in com competition with myself. I'm not in competition with any other man. And that's the way you need to think to win at this. Also, you got to be determined. You got to be eager and prepared to go the extra mile. 
So many of y'all guys do things on the surface level because I know you're afraid of, you got the fears and you got the rejections and you don't think you're good enough. But what I'm telling you, if you ever see that, have y'all seen that movie, It with the clown, that motherfucking clown, y'all seen that? Well, ask, think about this for a second. They gave you a secret. What gave the clown power? It was the fear that gave the clown the power. And what I'm saying is, once you take the power and the fear out of the pussy, there ain't nothing those goddamn women can do. Zero. There is nothing that she can say. There is nothing that she can dangle in your face when you make it all about you. Next thing, process-minded. You must stay in the moment at all times. Stop going in the fucking past. Stop thinking that you're not good enough because you failed with one woman. Because all you do every time you meet a woman is you keep going back in the past. Fuck the past. You can learn from the past, but stay in the moment. These women are the ultimate chess players when it comes to the game, and they've been doing this shit, if you're biblical, since goddamn Eve she knew that. Look at the game she ran on Adam's ass. Think about that for a second. <laughs> Think about that for a second. These women are not stupid. They know every move that you're going to make before you even make it. They know you. They, you don't think they watch the Red Men group? You don't think they watch Tanner's show? Or they don't think they watch Elliot? You don't think they watch all these guys? They're watching everybody. Why? Because they're soaking up information to know how you think so they can come up with the cure or the fix. They can't fix a fucking man, though. Respectful. You got to respect people, but never fear them. Always treat women the way you want to be treated. But don't take my kindness for weakness. Because if you think that I'm soft because I treat you nice, I'm getting rid of you. Now, I might let you be a booty call. I'll be a dick in a bottle type thing. But I'm not going to have a relationship with you. <laughs> not going to do that. Accountable. You've got to take responsibility for all your actions. Everything you do is what you do. And don't worry about the next man. Y'all are always worrying about the next fucking man. Fuck the next fucking man. Think about what you're doing. Be accountable for yourself and demand these women to do more for you. Stop, the, stop cupcaking these women just because she's got ass and titties. You put her ass through the gauntlet. You make her slay the Minotaur. You make her prove that she's worthy of you and your last name. But regardless of what happens, don't ever fucking blame the woman. Don't blame her because she turned you down. Don't blame her because she used you. Because as a man, I'm accountable for that shit. If I allow a woman to use me, that's on me. And I got to own that shit. But that's one of the problems. Y'all got to start taking accountability for every move you make and every move you don't make. Courageous. You got to be willing to take risks. It's a shame. And all you motherfucking guys used to take risks when y'all little kids saw that big ass tree, you climbed that motherfucker, even if you fell and twisted your ankle or broke your arm, as soon as you healed up, you climbed that tree again. You would always take risks and you didn't care what would happen to you as long as you got to the top of that tree. But as you got older, something began to happen to you and you begin to believe the stories that the media have been kicking out. We'll, de we'll definitely discuss that in the workshop. Optimistic. You have to believe that you have the will to succeed at all costs. Guys, I told you, I lose, I, when I was out there whoring around, I would lose all the time. I would turn down one after that, one after one. But do you think I gave a fuck? Hell no. And remember I told you, say the word, hey, say the word ass. You see that smile y'all have? Just think it. Say ass. See that smile you got on your face? Come on, man. You can't smile without saying ass. And hey, guess what? I believe I can succeed even in failure. But remember, guys, I don't lose. She says, no, I just learn. What makes you a loser is sitting your ass on the sideline daydreaming of what you want to do. That's what makes you a loser. And you motherfuckers ain't losers. So stop sitting on the fucking sideline. Get your ass in the game, get knocked down, and learn from the experience. Think about this real quick, gentlemen. How many of you guys, when you begin to drive a car, 
You got in there as a little kid, you saw the wheel, you saw all the buttons and shit and everything looked confusion. You were like, God damn, I didn't think I could drive this shit. Look at you now. You can drive your car, listen to the radio, eat a sandwich and talk on the fucking phone all at the same goddamn time. Why can you do that? It because it's the repetition. You got to get your ass knocked down to know where you're at. And you learn from where you're at and then begin to make the necessary adjustments. Prepare. The root of your confidence. Oh, my. Prepare. Come on, guys. Do you even know what to say to a woman? Do you even know what you want from a woman? I always tell you guys, any of my clients and stuff, I always tell you. I'm going to shake your motherfucking hand. I'm going to introduce myself to you. And then I'm going to let you know why I came over here. I came over here. Now, you got to keep it shoulder up, of course. But I'm going to let you know why I came over here. And then I'm going to tell you what I'm expecting, not sex. I'm going to tell you that, you know what, I want to take you out. Guess what? Not, no, hey, get your crayons out. No more fucking dinners. They don't deserve dinner. No more dinners. No more drinks. They don't deserve that shit. What have she done to deserve you spending money on her for dinner? And if she's got a problem with you spending dinner, then I say this with love. Fuck you. I'm not spending no money on you. What I'm going to do is we're going to go for ice cream, tea, or we're going to feed the ducks. Why? Because it's simply telling her this. If she's got a problem with that, I just want to know if we're compatible. What I want to know is does your personality match your beauty? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Well, what are your intentions with me? Well, to be honest with you, I don't know my intentions because I don't know you that well. That's why I'm taking you out. And that's why after you give her your number, stop taking numbers from women. You, they, they, they play games with that bullshit. If she likes you, she's going to call you. Women are very aggressive nowadays. But the thing is, you've got to be prepared. What is a date to you? You've got to prepare yourself for that. What is texting a woman? You've got to prepare yourself for that. How you approach her, you've got to prepare. Every step of your life is a preparation that you've got to have already locked and loaded and don't throw shit up. Stop this fucking what you do for a living and when was your last boyfriend bullshit. Dries up the pussy, guys. They don't like that stuff. Dries it up. Next thing, confident. Believe in yourself. You are all you got. You got to start loving and respecting you. And you got to start realizing that at the end of the day, I've got to know what I want as far as laws, rules, codes, and principles. Organized. You've got to be structured, guys. Structured. Think about numeric. Just one, two, three, four, five. I see her. I'm going to approach her. I'm going to uh, introduce myself to her. I'm going to let her know why I came over there. I'm going to let her know what my intentions are, and I'm going to offer her my number. One, two, three, four, five. But what a lot of you guys do, as soon as you see a woman, oh, my gosh, she's so pretty. What is she going to like in a guy like me? What do, I, what do I say for her? What do I do? Man, let me tell you all something. Like uh, Ed, Ed said, you can't cheat the game. These women already know as soon as you say something that's not authentic and not transparent, she already knows your story. Don't get that twist. Don't think these women are stupid because they get hit on every goddamn day. Everything that is under the sun, they have been exposed to, except the drug of MAN. And you know the beautiful thing about the drug of MAN, she can snort it, she can drink it, she can have it in mushroom form, she can light it up in a roll, she can roll it up or put it in a pipe and light it. But when she gets a dose of M-A-N, she's not going anywhere because she's not used to someone being 100% authentic. You don't have to pretend. They want you to pretend because as soon as they realize y'all are fake, they playing the game. Come on, guys, think about this for a second. No offense, I'm about to tell you about women, but I know you're over there watching. You're like, oh, my God. But let me tell y'all something. Think about women. They are the masters of manipulation and deception. They are the fucking Ginsu. If you want it, the highest of the high, they even above that. Why? The makeup is a lie and deception and manipulation. 
the weave, the hair, the eyeliners, the fingernails, the push-up bras, the girdles. They are walking fucking lies. So come on, you know you can't trick a trickster. How are you going to try to manipulate somebody who is the queen of manipulation? You can't do that because she'll let you in. And then guess what? You're either going to be her chauffeur, you're going to be her bank account where you'll pay her bills, or you're going to be the shoulder to cry on. And unfortunately, you might end up just being her bitch. But she's not going to give you any pussy for it. That's for the asshole. That's for the guy that has these pieces that I'm giving you right now. Driven, you must wake up each day with a desire to be better than what the fuck you are before. And why do I say that, guys? Because who I was yesterday, I'm not him anymore. I'm not. You know, when I do my radio shows, I always say this before I usually leave. Think about the graveyard before you go to bed at night. Because the thing about the graveyard, everybody in there thought they had tomorrow coming to them. That's all they have all in common. They thought they had tomorrow. So I'm thinking, if I'm going to die tonight, I'm going to make sure I live every motherfucking day like it is my last. Because who I was yesterday, fuck that guy. That guy was weak to me. Who I am today, this is who I am. And I can't wait to see who I am tomorrow because I am climbing up the mountain. I'm not sitting still. I'm not going down. I'm always ascending up because I respect the game. And that's why the game works for me. Because the game is going to give back to those that get their asses knocked down, dust themselves off, and say, what's next? Discipline. You must have self-control over everything and everybody. Listen, I know you love your parents, and I know you love your friends and all that other stuff. But one thing I love telling women, I'm a drama-free man. Anybody brings any drama in my life, they are gone. I don't play. And that doesn't mean for women. That means for everybody. Because everybody is not going to like you. You want to know why? Because you have passion, discipline, drive, something they don't have. So they're going to be jealous of you. You're going to have people talking about you, trying to knock you down. But I'm not saying kick them all the way out. I'm telling mom, you can no longer tell me how to move my furniture or how I should live my life. Mom, I love you, but please don't tell me how to be a man. You are a woman. You cannot tell me how to be something that you're not. So I love you, Mom, but please stop talking to me that way. Dad, I appreciate you, but I don't like the fact that you're always sleeping on the couch. You're always telling me happy wife, happy life. Don't make Mommy mad. Dad, I love you, but I can't, I can't rock with what you're saying because to me that's not a man. doesn't mean I don't love you, but please... Don't give me poisonous information that is going to do more harm to me than good. See, guys, at the end of the day, when you begin to connect all these things together, you begin to change your mindset. I'm, one thing about the man mindset, I tell you guys, if you want a good job, go for that shit. If you want a nice body, build your fucking body. If you want your money, stack your fucking cash. But don't do it for a fucking woman. As soon as you do that shit for a woman, you have just lost because you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Everything you do is for you, okay? But I'm about your mind. She can't touch your mind unless you allow her. You are your own kings. You are your own communities. And this, this right here, like everybody else, we are nothing but a bunch of communities coming together and sharing information at the table, we leave as our own communities, as our own individuals. We're not a cult. When you have the mindset, nobody can touch you. How many of you guys heard the, uh, the analogy, everybody's a winner? Have y'all heard that before? I know, it's fun. how many of y'all believe that? Anybody, show of hands, anybody believe that? No one, you don't believe it? Fuck, shame on all you motherfuckers. I love you all, but you all failed. Because let me tell you something. That's true. You all were born winners. When your mommy met your daddy, and he talked that yak in mommy's ear, I don't, I'm not, I don't know what happened. But after they had sex, there was a great race. 
meaning that you were racing against millions of your brothers and your sisters to do one thing, and that was reach the egg. And as you were going through your mother's body, there were things inside of her body that were destroying your brothers and sisters. But because you had drive, because you had passion, because you had desire, because you had that Thanos thinking, I have to get to what? The egg. Fuck everybody else. I've got to get to the egg no matter what. And guess what? You are all here today because, yes, you are winners. It's just something happened along the way of your lives where you started to believe that you're not winners. You all won. You beat out millions. I'm not talking about five. Millions of your brothers and sisters and you went through the body of your mom to reach the egg. You are winners. That's not a cliche. That's a fucking truth. But I don't, I don't have to believe it about me. I knew I was a winner. Shit, I knew when I was, I'm getting that motherfucking egg. Fuck everybody else. I'm getting there. You want to know why? Because I want to live. I want to go on. I want to be great. I, and I want to be all those things. But that's part of the mindset. But like I did with the coins, guys, you can't be a doctor in a day. You can't be a lawyer in a day. Everything, and I know it sounds another cliche, small steps, but the small steps are always going to lead to bigger steps when you begin to believe in yourself. You've got to, first thing you got to do is one of the most important things is look in the goddamn mirror and meet the person that is responsible for all your behaviors. It's not me, it's you. The person that is responsible for all the actions that you take and all the actions you don't take. For those that try to cheat the game and for those that stay in the game. All your choices and all your successes, it has nothing to do with any of the guys to the left of you or the right of you. It will always be you, but it is important to look at that guy in the mirror and learn him. Learn who he is. Learn how he thinks. Learn how he operates. Learn what your strengths are and what your weaknesses. But you don't lose. You learn. Learn. Learn who you are. Because this is the craziest thing, guys. <laughs> game have nothing to do but women. The game has nothing to do with women. Women are a fucking perk until you deem her worthy of girlfriend or wife. Ed was talking about getting, Ed, I feel like you're stealing my shit, dog, but Ed was talking about it. <laughs> Ed was right. Listen, power, the 1920s and 40s, and, and everybody's like, well, wait, well, I know you're saying game, is there is a color to it? No. Kingpins, kings, uh, uh, um, all kinds, triads, uh, uh, all kinds of men throughout the ages were trying to build themselves and their legacy, and, the, and women just came along the way. That's the thing you have to understand. The game has nothing to do with women, but because someone told you to make it about women, you believe the story. And once you believe the story, you started to live the story. That story's not true. And that's why when I meet a woman, who are you? Okay, yeah, you have a sexy body, you look good, but what are you bringing to my table? What separates you from everybody else? Why are you so special? And you know when you say that? They gonna be like, oh. I don't know. I never had a guy ask me that before. You goddamn right, because you've never been around a real man. Because the majority of y'all guys, when you see a woman, you think you got to take them out. I got to take her out and impress her. I'm impressing enough. Let me tell y'all something. When you do it right, guess what? Halloween, I mean, not Halloween, but um, Christmas, you have to buy her a present. If you want to buy one, you can, but I'm present enough. Valentine's Day, she's cooking for me. She's taking me out. Why? Because I'm the goal. I'm not trying to, remember I told y'all in the last thing, she's going after my last name. She's going after my ring. Why do I need to impress somebody when I, all I need to do is impress myself? 
because I make it all about me. Now, I know that sounds like I'm selfish, cocky, and conceited. You goddamn right. Absolutely. I have no problem with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You goddamn clap again, goddamn it. I love that shit. Yes, you're absolutely right. You guys, all of you, were born winners. Don't ever let nobody take that shit from you. And the next time somebody says that shit to you, you say, you goddamn right I was born a winner. Because that's the truth. We just got to get you guys back to that time where you realize, wow, I don't really care. I just need to win and keep doing the things with the power, the passion, and the discipline. Okay? Get back to your two plus two fours. Your two plus two is four thoughts. Guys, listen, and, and ending this, about to end this right now, but I want to say this, man. I love you guys. I don't know you, but I love you. And you want to know why I love you? Because I believe in you. I believe in all of you. That's why the fuck I'm here. Because you know what? I know you're going to stumble. I know you're going to lose. I know you're going to get shut down and rejected. But you know what? I'm here to tell you so fucking what. If a 5'7", 48-year-old, average-looking motherfucker can get paid as a gigolo from women, what is your excuse? What is your excuse? Yeah, I was whoring back in the day. I told you, I was a whore. Yeah. My early 20s, oh, man, I was going through women like a hot knife through butter. But that's another story for another time, guys. But what I'm just saying for you guys is this. Stop making the excuses. They make the excuses. We take accountability in actions. Steve Dean Williams, TheManMindset.com, guys. Thank you.